residents excessive outside storage of miscellaneous items to include furniture. On July 30, 2018, I observed the same to include back and vehicle filled with miscellaneous items and overflowing trash and recycled containers on the front yard. I noticed the violation was sent by certified mail and the copy of the notice was posted at the property in City Hall on August 1, 2018. The notice gave 20 days to correct the violations. I re-inspected the property on October 22, 2018 and the violations were not correct. The photos on the screen accurately depict violations and were taken on October 22, 2018. An affidavit of violation and notice of hearing was sent by certified mail and received by the owners on January 17, 2019. I last inspected the property on February 15, 2019, and the property was not in compliance. I'm requesting an order finding violation and recommending 15 days for compliance or $25 for the fine be imposed. I'm also requesting that costs incurred by the city for processing this case be assessed. The cost to date total $271.34. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Would you state your name for the record? This is Leah Campbell. Mrs. Campbell, um, what would you like, you've heard the testimony of the Fed Enforcement Officer, um, what would you like for me to take into consideration as well? Yes, um, on the prior picture, with the carpets outside, we were doing some repair on the inside of the house, so those were there temporarily. As far as the storage go, we do get rain barrels for that, and um, those um, trash can was put to the side of the house, so they're not there. If she came on the 15, they're not there. That is correct. So the trash, the storage of the trash cans has been taken care of? Yes, and um, as far as the water in the, in the blue containers, we set them when it's raining because we have plants, but once the rain fall and gone, we use it to water the plants and then we put them back to the back. So they're not always there. <clears throat> okay, well that's, that's one of the violations. The other one is the, uh, the storage of sanitation and storage of materials. Right, and none of those carpets are there. Um, all of them was put away. Actually, a car, uh, mechanic come and get them. So that's why they were there, for him to pick up. Okay. When were those removed? Um, those carpets were removed, that was in October. Those carpets went in and some other came out and he picked it up. So they were all done in October. So none of those carpets are there. The only issue was the water container and I put them to the side of the house and get rain barrels. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Woods, on the uh, sanitation and storage of materials, um, was the, the basis for your citation just the carpets or was it something else? No, sir, it was what you see here in the photos. It's the outside storage of furniture, which is still, it was still there on the last of the inspection. The okay. containers were moved to the side of the house. Uh, Ms. Campbell, are, are those, uh, you, you heard the set uh, And the treadmill, the treadmill I use, so they're there in the front. I mean, I don't have anywhere to take the side, so that's where I put them, in front of my yard. Well, what about the furniture and some of the other The babe, the, that couch is a sitting couch that we sit outside, and the day bed already been taken to um, uh, reclaim place that buys used furniture. Like I said, they were there temporarily because um, I was doing some repair inside the house. So we had to take stuff up. We were um, doing some wood floor and putting in some carpets in the room. Okay, so it's your testimony that the, the any furniture that's there, is this a carport? Yes. Okay, that that's not being stored there, that's being used as part of your living facility? Right. Okay. Um, the city has any response to that? At this point, Your Honor, um, it might be possible to have the code official reinspect the property, um, identify any violations that would still be outstanding to the property owner. Um, we could continue this matter further if, um, if Your Honor would prefer. Yeah, I think so. Uh, let's, let's do that. I'd like to continue the case to give you and the code enforcement officer an opportunity to, to meet and discuss the situation and, and see if there's any need for the case to come back. Uh, it, although it does sound like there were violations and I assume the city, even if the property is in compliance now, would still want me to enter an order finding that violations did exist at one time. Correct, Your Honor. Okay. Yes, sir. 
All right, let's let's do that. Let's continue the case. Um, um, do you want me to continue to a date certain to our next meeting, or do you prefer just to have it uh, subject to re notice? Next hearing. Next hearing. Next hearing. Okay. I'm going to continue the case till the next hearing. Uh, give you and the code enforcement officer an opportunity to get together and, and discuss what what may need to be done yet, or you know, to just familiarize each other with your positions and see if y'all can't get it resolved. When will it be the next hearing? March 21st. Case number 18-439 is continued until the March 21st uh, special magistrate hearings. Case number 18-870, uh, this is property address 643 Avenue E Northeast. Morning, sir. Um, Ms. Wicks, would you present this case? questions from Ms. Woods and yes, some evidence to present. Um, and let me just say, maybe it's, I um, don't know enough about the procedure to know, I think we all agree that the, if there was a violation that's been resolved, all we're looking for is a finding that doesn't result in a, a repeat offender status uh, or have to pay the cost. So I'm not sure there's a disposition that we can agree to like that if the city's intend on going forward, we're ready to proceed. Any disposition that fits those parameters is fine with us. Okay. There may not be such a middle ground disposition, but if there is, but assuming there's not, then Ms. Woods, um, one of the pictures up there had to do with a car without a tag. That isn't part of today's hearing, is it? That's correct. It is not part of today's hearing. Oh. And is it in evidence? It is. I mean, it was up there a minute ago. I'm just trying to figure out whether it's part of the evidence presented to the <coughs> officer or not. Mr. Young, we're here today to talk about roof and drainage and PMS violation 304.7. And more specific to your point or question or issue that was raised, that uh, the date of reinspection was December 10, 2018, the number of days to come into compliance. Uh, was 45 days um, based on the evidence presented it would be the city's position that the property was not in compliance on the within the time period prescribed for compliance so we'd be seeking an order finding violation no by imposed pursuant to Florida law um, the only uh, 
manner in which to waive city costs, which are actual city administrative costs, would be to find that no violation occurred. Right. Because a violation did occur, uh, city costs, this, this opinion would not have jurisdiction, this magistrate would not have jurisdiction to waive city costs. All right, and you're saying that on behalf of the is attorney for the city? I represent the city of Winter Haven. Okay, thank you. I wasn't familiar with that. I didn't hear that at the beginning. But my question really was related to the evidence and whether the picture of the car with other tags was evidence in this case. That's well, I, I'll take care of that. Uh, I, I will only admit into evidence uh, those photographs that are germane to the roof issue. Good, and we have no objection to any of the four that are on the screen now. Okay. Yes, sir. So the one, one photo of the vehicle will not be admitted into evidence. Thanks. Correct. The vehicle is now in compliance, but then in violation again on another case. So, but it was in compliance, the vehicle was at the time of the hearing, so it is not part of this particular case. So the, um, just so that I understand the chronology, um, this was, tell me again, you gave 45 days to have the property corrected. Um, and this, this is roof damage that relates back to Hurricane Irma. So I, can I proceed with some questions from sure, Ms. Woods? Sure, sure. Ms. Woods, your uh, job is in the nature of a police officer, correct? No, sir. Well, you have a badge, right? I'm a code enforcement officer. And your job is to gather evidence and keep track of it? Correct. Visit the sites, talk to witnesses? Yes, sir, if possible. Check property records? Yes, sir. And in fact, you actually check the deed for this one. Yes, sir, at time of hearing. Yes, and you're trained to gather favorable evidence to the city or evidence that supports the property owner as well. I can to the form of the question. Uh, is your job to collect evidence as related to a particular case? Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll rephrase it. Is it your job to collect only evidence that shows a violation and to ignore evidence that doesn't show a violation? I object. Ask and answer. So your job is to collect evidence as to a particular case. Well, just in the interest of getting us uh, moving on, uh, Ms. Woods, if you would answer the question, if you recall it, not ask Mr. Young to rephrase it. Please rephrase the question. My question is simply, is it your job to collect all the evidence favorable to the city and unfavorable to the city and to keep track of it and report it? Yes, sir. Thank you. And you said that uh, you and I have talked, correct? Correct, at the beginning of the case. And that I told you that the roof had been damaged in the hurricane, or, but you didn't say that I told you the roof didn't leak. Do you remember that? I, I can read you what, what you stated. Okay, the law, that's fine. Would you like me to do that? Sure. I observed the, uh, the tarp roof on July 11, 2018. On July 18, Mr. Bob Young, uh, the owner, phoned, deciding whether or not to demolish the house and didn't want to put money into the roof if they decided to demo. Definitely damaged, but no known leaks. Tarp was put up right after Hurricane by FEMA and left up. Mr. Young requested until end of August, as this is when part his partner returns to make the decision about the demo. Demo is being considered as owners may combine surrounding parcels. And then on August 17th, we'll oh, see. That answers my question. Okay. Um, so I told you the roof didn't leak. And Your Honor, I have to object. Uh, we were able to read from a law here that everything else that's being presented is hearsay. Do you have any type of law or any type of written document uh, from the time in which the conversation took place? Excuse me? Do you have any law or any written document from the time in which the conversation took place? Uh, I, I'll just ignore that. I don't understand it. This Wood has accurately read what the conversation was. I 
and that's what I asked you okay, to do. So that, that, so I have no objection to what was right in front of the law. Okay, that's all I would say. But I think, as I understand, you're just relaying back your recollection of the conversation. No, but I didn't mean to even do that. I agree exactly with what okay. you said. All right, very good. So my question, though, related to the to the ordinance. The ordinance doesn't make it illegal to have a tarp on the roof, right? So what is your question directly? Do you want me to repeat it? Yes, I would like you to repeat the question. We could have the court reporter read it or That's fine, court reporter can read it. Thank you. took the statement. 
Um, and at this point, I don't believe the city would need to present any further evidence, Your Honor. I'm happy to have that admitted as evidence. I don't know why it has to be read twice. Ms. Wood did a good job. First, uh, that is part of the record. I will take that into consideration. It will be a part of the record. All right. So, Ms. Wood, let me, let me ask a question. Irma was August, September, September of September 11th of 2017. 17. Okay. And we've established that through your conversation with the code enforcement officer, you acknowledged that the roof had been damaged in Irma, and that was the reason for the tarp being placed on the roof. To make sure it didn't leak. And the code, as I understand it, says that the roof shall be sound and tight and shall something be secure so that it doesn't leak. Is that correct? Yes, sir. But may I also add that on October 11th, upon my reinspection, that there have, I observed damage to the soffit and fascia, which was also part of the violation. Okay. Fine. Okay. Mr. Young, please proceed. Well, I, I think I'm getting the impression it could be more expeditious if I just told you the story and called a witness. Uh, but uh, there's one. Well, do you have additional questions? Of I, I do, but I'm not okay. doing so well in that regard. Well, continue on. And uh, if there's an objection by anyone to voice your objection, then I'll determine whether how to proceed with that. Kind of yeah, so, other than my statement that the roof didn't leak, did you ever talk to a witness who said it did leak? I spoke to, I received a phone call from someone named Debbie, who claimed she was the tenant's daughter. She stated that her mother had lived there for many years and that the owner had failed to fix the roof. Even though they received funds from the insurance, it is now leaking inside the house. She's concerned about the mold because of her elderly mother. Did you ever determine whether the tenant had a daughter named Debbie? No, sir. Whether Debbie ever lived in the house? I received a call from the tenant on October 24th, Teresa Monday, stating uh, that she was giving the car away, which was on part of the original violation. It was a violation. Mm -hmm. She stated that the owner contacted her requesting she call me, and that was the extent of my uh, contact with Ms. Monday. She would have been in the best position to know if the roof was right. It's speculative, Your Honor, I object. Well, let, let me say this. From my interpretation of the code, I don't think it, the roof has mm -hmm. to be leaking in order for that to be a part of or for that to be the conclusive point there being a violation. I understand that. The roof, if the roof is damaged, whether it's leaking or not, it's not sound and tight, etc. So that would be a violation. And station soffit, yes sir, you're correct. Okay, yeah. and and the tarp would not be a code compliant roof cover. It's merely a temporary uh, precaution, if you will. <coughs> But there has to be a defect underlying the tarp. Well, but, but you've acknowledged that the roof was damaged. And I'll prove that in just a second. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's get on to that then, please. Can I, no, Ms. Wood. May I please say something? May I remind you that the, the damaged fascia and soffit falls under the same ordinance that the tarp and the soffit are under? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Wood, you have a question? Well, I, I think from the testimony I've heard, there doesn't seem to be any dispute that the roof was damaged. Okay. So, can, Mr. Young, if you'll continue. Is there a picture of the damaged patient in the soffit, Ms. Wood? Yeah, I can't really tell you that off the top of my head. There's no, no document that talks about that. And in the violation where it says, nature of violation, it's just got some code numbers, right? Description of violation says roofs and drainage MPMS 294.7. Right? Is that correct? I'm sorry, sir. 
understand. I didn't know you were directing a question to me. On your description and the notice of today's hearing, it says roofs and drainage MPMS 204.7. Uh, that would be in correct 304.7? Uh, three, okay, 304. Correct, that is the correct statement as to the MPMS citation for today's hearing. But it doesn't say anything about soft. No, it would be categorized under roofs and drainage. Or fascia. Okay. For whatever it's worth, I'm not particularly hung up over the soffit and the fascia. Well, that's good to know. I'll proceed on. You signed an affidavit of violation on under oath on July 30th. I mean, on January 30th of this year, correct? Yes, that is correct. And on January 30th, you hadn't checked the building permits to see that a building permit was issued for the roof, correct? I only know upon my re-inspection that it was still tarped and I hadn't heard from you and I did turn it in to the code clerk on January 23rd to be scheduled for a February special magistrate. So you signed the violation affidavit <clears throat> saying that 40 some days earlier that you had seen a violation? No, sir. Yes. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. But in the meantime, the building permits would have shown that a building permit was issued for the roof. So you did request a permit be issued, which would indicate that you had not yet performed the work which would still be a violation of the code technically. So um, I'm having a difficult time uh, uh, not objecting to your line of questioning. So a permit was issued. This is not a permit case either, Your Honor, but a permit would not cure a violation. <coughs> My point is that when you sign the violation affidavit that triggered today's hearing, if you had looked, you would have seen the roof was done. You would have seen a permit was issued. If you checked the public records, you would have seen a notice of commencement had been filed. But you didn't do any of that. It is, sir, up to the property owner to notify the code officer if they have corrected the violations. I, I can't check the property or records 24 hours a day. There's going to be a gap somewhere. A 40 day gap? No, sir. Well, this was a 40 day gap. Again, just because a building permit is pulled, we've had them sit there and never picked up or obtained from the property owner. That means really nothing. And you don't know if materials were on the job site? <clears throat> no, sir. I was only there on my last reinspection date. I, I didn't return after that date, sir. Or Let me ask a question, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Young, is it your testimony that um, that from the date of the notice of violation on October 23rd and in 45 days that was given to bring the property in compliance, that the property was brought into compliance before the December 10th date of reinspection? It's my testimony that the wheels were put, the roofing contractor was contracted and so forth within the 45 day period. I don't control their schedule. And I really don't remember when we signed the contract or when they started the work. The point is, before the hearing was asked for, the work was long since finished. And that's the point. And, and that's when you should have contacted your code officer to inform them of that. And so the fines and so forth are based on my failure to do that. The way you're honored by his own admission, by Mr. Young's own admission, the property was not in compliance by December 7, 2018, which was the date to be corrected by. Therefore, there was remaining a violation on the property on that day. Um, therefore, the city would respectfully request that we enter an order finding violation, no fine imposed, um, and post city costs. I have more witnesses. I was hoping that we would wait till the end of that before. Okay. Well, yeah. let's let's press on, um, Mr. Young. With um, any more questions you have of uh, the code enforcement officer? No. Okay. Any other testimony or evidence you wish to present? Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> the 
This is um, Ms. Janet Del Castillo, who's the co-owner with me and has been for how long? Oh, 25 years uh, in partnership with you. And how long have we owned that property? About 10 years. Who normally deals with the tenants? I do. Do you? And how long have these tenants have these tenants been there? At least 10 years. Have they, throughout that time, told you about problems with the property? Yes. Have you corrected them as they occurred? Every time, yes. Did they ever tell you the roof leak? Never. Do you know anyone named? No, no, the, the yeah. woman that called Debbie, the woman that called you on the phone. Yeah. Do you know anyone named Debbie? I really don't remember a Debbie. I mean, it was years ago that this all started. Okay. And turning to the roof itself, what damage did you see that caused you to have uh, the contractors of FEMA put the tarp on? I saw shingles missing, and so I didn't want any damage to happen, and that's what I did. And by shingles missing, you mean tabs from shingles? Flip-ups. Yes. So little. Thank you. Nothing further. Your Honor, I would like to state for the record that the code enforcement system is a complaint-driven system. Uh, once we, a complaint is received, then the, the alleged violation is uh, investigated. However, it's not uncommon to receive complaints from individuals not wanting to give their real name or a name or give an alias. The purpose of the complaint driven system is to remediate any violations within the municipal, ba municipal boundaries of the city of Hunter Haven. So I don't necessarily feel that it's relevant whether or not it was Debbie or if it was anyone else that had called in the alleged violation. If I could just make a final argument, I think yes. at this point we we'll move on. Um, if it is a complaint driven system, there certainly was no complaint from any owner or occupant or neighbor about this place. That's speculation. Was, we received a complaint. It's documented. Long um, after you had been there, but I was hoping to make my closing statement and then respond to any rebuttal. Well, excuse me, when you, this case originated by a sweep request. By what request? A request to sweep the area. Okay. To, so it was not. And, just to be sure the record is clear, a sweep request is someone in the city who tells you to go clean up the place, right? No, sir. Well, I, for the benefit of everyone that has an interest in this particular case, I'm not particularly concerned whether it was a citizen complaint, an anonymous call, or just the code enforcement officer was in the area and noticed that the property was tenant. Uh, my, my question before me is, was there a violation was a violation corrected? When was it corrected? That's the gist of it for me. I agree with that. And my point is, in and I'll try to put it in order that I think makes sense, seeing shingle tabs on the yard is one thing that owners use to file an insurance claim. And when they blow up and down, they break off. So the first thing you'll have to decide is whether missing shingle tabs by themselves creates an unsound roof or, uh, well, it had to be an unsound roof because at this point we know it either didn't leak or no one who would be in the best position to know who lived there said it did. So the first thing is whether those missing tabs themselves are a violation of the city code. And we maintain that, that it takes more than that to start a code case like this. The second thing is that even if there was a violation, which we believe there was not, then it was remedied before the affidavit of violation was executed. And reasonable diligence, the same kind of diligence that brought the uh, evidence to this tribunal in the first place, would have revealed that the work was done, finished before the affidavit was filed. So the only purpose then what, of this hearing is to establish that it wasn't completed in the time that the 
code enforcement officer herself chose. She extended the time, and for which we thank her, uh, until my partner came back from out of state, or out of the country, I don't know which. Um, and then while we were negotiating with folks for other considerations of use of the property. And then it was contracted to have a new roof put on, and it, that depends on the contractor's timeline. And that is viewed against the timeline that Ms. Woods chose to extend. And so we're here today because the city claims that we didn't complete the work, although the work is completed, within the time its officer chose to set for a deadline. And that's all because there were missing shingle tags. And it's our position that under the city's recently announced code enforcement position that favors compliance over punishment, according to the city official who announced that this week, then this case should be dismissed with a finding of no violence. Okay. Anything further from the city? Okay. Um, okay. Um, well, just to be clear on the record, the only thing that's going to be a part of the record in terms of the photographic evidence is that that uh, depicts the roof, the motor vehicle will not be included. Um, and just for the benefit of everybody, uh, my role here is to determine, number one, did a violation exist? And then number two, does a violation still exist at the time of the hearing? Um, <coughs> that's... Um, under the language of the uh, code that says that the roof shall be sound, tight, and not have defects that it is <coughs> I don't view that as you got to check all three of those boxes in order for there to be a violation. It's got to be sound, it's got to be tight, and it's also got to not admit, uh, have defects that admit rain. I think the, the evidence is conclusive. Um, it's been um, agreed. Uh, by all who testified that there was conversation and uh, an admission that the roof had been damaged in Irma, uh, Irma being uh, related back to uh, uh, early fall of uh, 2017. And, um, and the roof was tarped in order to prevent the structure being damaged as a result of the roof damage. Um, so I'm going to find that a violation did exist. Uh, which I understand, Mr. Young, that was your one of your concerns and goals was to have a finding that no violation existed for purposes of avoiding repeat violation status. But I'm going to find that a violation did exist. Uh, I'm going to find that the violation, based on the testimony presented today, does not exist. Um, and based on the testimony that I've heard, it sounds like not that I think it's necessarily germane. Um, to the whole discussion, but it sounds like that within the time that was prescribed by the officer in which to bring the property in compliance, the testimony is, as I understand it, unrefuted that the property was not in compliance at the expiration of those 45 days. Um, so I'm going to find a violation did exist, that the property is compliance, been in compliance as of this date. Uh, and, and under the statute and the controlling regulations, I am going to assess the city's cost, the amount of $292.74. Uh, those will be paid within 30 days of today's date. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. This is case number 18-1418. The violation address is 806 Avenue R, Northeast, and is owned by Paul Odom. I first inspected the property on October 26, 2018. I observed a single family resident to have excessive jump trash and debris throughout the property to include the interior visible through open doors, a wood privacy fence, and a chain link fence in disrepair, torn window and door screens, an untagged vehicle, dog kennels in disrepair, a dead animal on the side yard appearing to be a rabbit, overgrowth in areas, faded address numbers on the structure. Trash containers in the front of the structure, accessory structures in disrepair, and a bad odor throughout the property. The 
police and animal control were on site when I arrived, was also informed by the police that emaciated dogs were removed from the animal control by animal control, control prior to my arrival, and that the structure's interior surfaces were damaged to the floors. A notice of violation was sent by certified mail, and a copy of the notice was posted at the property in City Hall on November 8, 2018. The notice gave 30 days to correct the violations. I reinspected the property on January 7, 2019, and the violations were not corrected. The numbers on the screen accurately detailed the violations and were taken on January 7, 2019. I've also submitted additional photos taken at the time of the original inspection dated 10-26-18 for the special magistrate to review. <coughs> An affidavit of violation and notice of hearing was sent by certified mail and received by the owners on February 5, 2019. I last inspected the property on February 15, 2019, and the property was not in compliance. I have not received contact from the owner. Although the rear yard is no longer visible to my knowledge, the violations still exist. I am requesting an order to find a violation and recommending 30 days for compliance or a $25 per day fine be imposed. I am also requesting that costs incurred by the city for processing this case be assessed. Cost to date total $203.34. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Would you state your name for the record, please? Mr. Adam, uh, did you take an oath earlier this morning? Were you present when I administered an oath? Uh, no, thanks. Okay, let me, if you would, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give here today will be the truth and the whole truth? Yes. All right, thank you, sir. You've heard the testimony of the third enforcement officer. What would you like for me to take into consideration today? Take into uh, consideration that <laughs> Really, I was surprised myself. I was really surprised because in September the 5th of 2017 is when I was incarcerated in the Polk County Jail. So this property wasn't like this when I left. So 16 months that I've been, that's where I've been in jail. So a lot of that is cleaned up. Uh, do you reside at the property or is it occupied by tenants or someone other than yourself? Actually, it was uh, vandalized by people in general, kids and, you know, after I went to jail because, and I didn't realize this until I got out uh, about a week or so ago. Okay. Um, you're not contesting, then. It doesn't sound like you're contesting the fact that these violations exist on the property. Is that correct? Uh, the thing is, it's been vandalized, and I can't help but see it and, and contest it because it's there. It's real. All right, so. Uh, but it's not from my doing. Well, you're the owner of the property, and, 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 and unfortunately, uh, it doesn't matter whether you did it or a tenant did it or somebody that wasn't authorized to be there did it. Those are all things that I would take into consideration uh, as part of my ruling, but not necessarily as to whether or not the violations exist. So I think we can move on beyond the question of whether the violations exist. They do exist. Who caused the violations to exist? Um, if I understand your testimony, you were incarcerated up to a week ago. Now, did you occupy this property before you were incarcerated? It was, uh, no, because I was in jail. Well, I'm, a, I'm asking, before you were incarcerated, before you were put in jail, did you reside at this property? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And is your testimony, like I see a portal at the upper left-hand photo there, was right. that not there before you went? Yeah, it was jail. Okay. I'll put that down. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> but all this debris and all that then. Did you not have anyone checking on the property while you were incarcerated? Sometimes it's kind of hard to get in contact with people. Okay. All right. How much time do you need to bring the property in compliance? Um, I would say six months because I don't know what's going to happen. What do you mean you don't know what's going to happen? I'm, I'm just saying because 
I could be dead tomorrow. I mean, anything allowed to happen. Well, you know, you know, I can appreciate that, but uh, within the things that you'd have control over, and assuming that you don't die within the next week or two weeks, how long do you think it's going to take you, based on the violations that exist on the property, to bring it in compliance? Uh, 60 days. 60 days? Okay, what I'm going to do is, uh, the recommendation by staff is that uh, they've asked for 30 days. Um, or a $25 day fine uh, will commence to accrue. I'm going to give you the 60 days that you're requesting before a fine kicks in. Okay? So I'm going to give you 60. However, in light of the number of violations and by your own admission that while some of them may have occurred while you were incarcerated, you've acknowledged that at least one of them was there before you were incarcerated. If you don't bring the property in compliance within 60 days, the fine will be $50 a day. Okay? So you got 60 days to bring the property in compliance. If you don't bring it into compliance, the $50 a day fine will commence to accrue. Uh, you'll need to communicate with code enforcement to let them know when you think you have it in compliance so that they can document that. Um, and I am going to assess the city's cost, the amount of $203.34. Those will be payable within 30 days. Okay. This is 302 Avenue G, Southeast. It's owned by Jerry B. Curry and Sheena L. Curry. I first inspected this property on September 26, 2018. Observed a single family residence with a tarp over the back of the structure, an untagged vehicle, and open storage throughout the property of building materials and other items. I spoke to Ms. Sheena Curry on the phone and explained the violations. She stated that her son lives at the property and should have him take care of the open storage and untagged vehicle, but she had to contact the roofer who did the roof. She stated that she would stay in contact with me. I re-inspected the property on 10-12-2018 um, and found all the violations remained. A notice of violation was sent by certified mail and received by the owners on 10-23-2018. The notice gave 60 days to correct the violations. I re-inspected the property on 1-4 of 2019 and the violations were not corrected. The photos on the screen have to pick the violations and were taken on 1-4 of 2019. An affidavit violation notice of hearing was sent by certified mail and a copy of the notice was posted at the property and City Hall on 2-11 of 2019. I last inspected the property on 2-14 of 2019 and the violations were not, or the property was not compliant. I've spoken with Ms. Curry several times. She has not been able to work out the roof issues with the original roofer and has applied for funding through Rebuild Pulp. They have been pre-qualified pre or in the process of finishing the paperwork. Her disabled son lives on the property and her husband has medical issues which does not allow her to attend today's hearing. However, we've discussed the violations in a time frame and have agreed to 120 days. I'm requesting an order finding violation. I'm recommending 120 days for compliance or $25 per day fine be imposed. I also request cost incurred by the city for processing this case be assessed. Cost to date total $244.51.
violation address is 1704 East Lake Cannon Drive, Northwest, and owned by the state of Fay Hold Building. I first inspected the property on June 11, 2018, and observed the vacant residence, several holes in the top of the roof, rotting broken roof trusses, rotting damaged fascia and soffit, overgrowth exceeding 12 inches high, bees swarming in and out of the walls on the side of the residence, chipped and peeling paint on all the windows, the rear exterior door of the residence standing wide open and appeared to be unable to be closed due to damage or secured. One side of the residence, the roof had caved in. The rear porch was rotted and damaged in disrepair and had broken windows. Due to the fence along the rear of the property being halfway down and disrepair allowing access to the property, that coupled with the roof being caved in, it was determined that this property was dangerous and unsafe and unfit for human occupancy. And it was close to a placket stating such. Notice of violation was sent by certified mail and received by the owners on August 28, 2018. Notice gave 30 days to correct the violations. They inspected the property on January 2, 2019, and the violations were not corrected. The photos on the screen accurately depict the violations and were taken on January 2. Affidavit of note for violation and notice of hearing was sent by certified mail and received by the owners. February 8th, 2018. I last inspected the property on February 14th and the property was not in compliance. I'm requesting an order filing violation, recommending 30 days for compliance with $250 per day fine be imposed. I'm also requesting the cost incurred by the city for processing this case be assessed. The cost to date total $200.34. Thank you. That was a $250 day fine? Yes, sir. Requested. Okay. All right. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Could you identify yourself for the record, please? Sherry Dolan. Okay. And your relationship to the property? My mother. Okay. Uh, your mother was there on the property. Okay. Um, I recognize the name of the estate, but I yeah. don't recognize the photograph, so I'm assuming this is a different property than the one that... No. The same, same one. Same property? Yeah. Okay. Um, what would you like for me to take into consideration today? I am in... I... I uh, I've signed papers for um, Rebuilt Florida. Um, they're they come in and do they're going to come in and do an assessment, and I don't know when because you, you just get put on a list. Okay. Um, they um, they have a form which I cannot get a copy of because she doesn't know if she can give them to me. She will know in the next few days. Um, of um, it's, it says if you're doing anything to the properties, you have to stop when you sign the papers. So I will know in the next few days whether she's checking into that. Because they have no, um, <coughs> they have no ordinance whether they, they can give out that information. Or, even though I signed them. Signed them. Um, And I did. I'm not. I'm not disputing this. I'm just letting you know. And I'm your, your testimony that when you sign the, the documentation or the contract, the agreement that you individually are prevented from making any repair to the property. Anybody, until they come in. Okay. Until they come in, and um, oh, let's see. Um, uh, until they do uh, right. Until the assessor come in and do right of injury and come in and look at it and decide what they're going to do with it. Was it the thought that this property might be rehabbed? If they want to spend a lot of money, yeah. Now, I, they, they either decide um, whether to tear it down or, or repair it. Okay. So are you deeding the property to? I'm not deeding it to anyone. I just gave them the right of entry to go, and then they make you stop doing work on it. Okay. And, and who is this? It's through Rebuild Florida. It's a program. It's a grant funding for rehab after the hurricanes. Um, Polk County was one of the um, we got me. agencies or one of the counties that was approved to um, have the grant funding. 
Okay. Well, this from the pictures, it appears this is not hurricane damage per se. This appears to be a property that's been in decline for for some time. Well, a lot of But I mean, that's for purposes of my decision. I don't think that really has any great bearing. Um, what I'm going to do. Um, is um, instead of the 30 days that has been requested by the city, <clears throat> I'm going to um, I'm going to give you 75 days okay. to bring the property in compliance. However, I will go with the city's recommendation that if the property isn't brought in compliance through rehab or through demolition, that the $250 day fine will commence to accrue. Okay. And, and as you've heard <coughs> speak of uh, today on previous cases, once the property is brought in compliance, if a fine does start to accrue, under my order, um, you can then apply for the reduction of the fine. Okay. I uh, also will assess the city's cost the amount of $200.34. Those will be paid within 30 days of today's date. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, it appears the Rebuild Florida is a program run by the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity and in partnership with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. And it states here it was created to help families rebuild homes damaged or destroyed by Hurricane Irma. And that registration is the first step. But that's all the information that's readily available. For that's right. So, okay. All right. So again, in case number 18-1050, uh, my order will be uh, a finding that uh, the violations did exist and do continue to exist on the property. Property owner will be afforded 75 days to bring property in compliance or a fine of $250 a day will commence to accrue. The city's cost, the amount of $200.34, uh, will be assessed. Those to be paid within 30 days of today's date. Thank you, ma'am. Good luck to you. Anyone here on that case? Good morning. Uh, let's see, Mr. Cedar? Yes, sir. <coughs> This is case 18-1352, violation address is 25, excuse me, 525 J Northwest, and it's on my copyright on the proper side. First inspected the property on October 11, 2018, and observed a vacant resident with temporary construction events around it, which was damaged in the Quam Nova. There's been no construction activity in years. All the windows were missing. All the windows were missing glass and all the frames that were on exposed wood. Window screens were torn and damaged. Window and door frames were damaged, rotted and in disrepair. Exterior wall sections had sections of sliding missing. The roof was damaged and missing shingles. The exterior door by the sand was damaged and disrepair. And the picture inside was damaged and disrepair. <coughs> the residence was also overgrown. The total roof exceeding coverage is high. Notice of violation was sent by certified mail, and a copy of the notice was posted at City Hall at the property on November 13, 2018. Notice gave 30 days to correct violations. We inspected the property on December 13, 2013, the violation, excuse me, 2018, and the violations were not corrected. Photos on the screen accurately depict the violations were taken on December 13, 2018. An affidavit of violation was sent by certified mail received by the owners on January 14, 2019. I last inspected the property on February 14, the property was not in compliance. Requesting the lower quality violation, recommending 30 days for compliance with $25 per day fine being imposed. Also requesting the cost incurred by the city for processing this case be assessed. The cost to date total $240.34. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Would you state your name for the record, please? I'm not on the Okay, hey, you're the owner of the property? Yes. Okay. What would you like for me to take into consideration this morning? I had a roof guy that started that work on December of 2018. He took almost six weeks to do a two-day job. When I tried to contact him, I paid him off once, so he was not responding. Then I tried to contact the owner of the fence at the back, Nobody knew who the owner was, so I had to take down the fence myself, pay and get the case. 
and the front, the front is the front of the The windows permit, I, the same guy that did the rookies, a general contractor, he was supposed to pull the permit. I realized that he did not pull, he did not pay for the permit up until late December, after he was busy. Then when the officer passed by, he asked us to stop the work that was going on. And I contacted the guy and he said, um, he was heading down there to pay for the permit. So I'm like, 60 something dollars you didn't pay for, and you have us to stop the job now? And he said, oh, I'm coming down there. And it took him almost two weeks to get that done. Eventually, <coughs> I contacted another contractor, and he has applied for the permit, and it's in the process. Friday, we applied for the permit for the roof. Well, the roof is done. The windows and doors, we are doing the electrical and plumbing. Those permits were also applied for. So I'm waiting for the city to call to say what's going on. Yesterday, I did the notice of commencement and send it over to the contractor, so that's where I'm at with this. Okay, so I want to make sure I understand your testimony. <coughs> your testimony that the roof has been repaired at this time? Yes, the fence also is repaired, and well, the, the, the grass and weeds is cut. The construction fits? Yes. It, is it gone? I took it down, all that is gone. And what it's about, a brand new fence there. What about the wooden fence? That's also done. I took that down and put a new fence in. Okay. I have not verified that there's a spoke for you. Me? No. Um, Tuesday? Yeah. She, referred, she, she stated the fence had been repaired. All the other violations have been corrected, including the roof. However, the roof has uh, done without a permit now. Sorry? It has been. With the fly for the navigation. Okay, for the roof, you're saying? It's signed off for. I've seen it signed off for. I have a copy of that. I can in my check it again. Yeah. So I have it in the car if you want me to bring it. I can bring it. The, the permit issue would be relevant to. Right, yeah. For the record, what we're saying is that. The violations were not corrected within the time frame given as of the reinspection in December on December 13th. The violations still existed. We have verified that the roof has been replaced, so that is now in compliance. However, as of the date of the affidavit and the date of compliance was due, it was not corrected. Um, and the fence has not been verified. I called and told them that the fence was complete. And the roof, I couldn't do anything to get the permit. I went down to the office and they told me that I needed the contractor to come in. Who was giving me a really hard time? That's why I had to change contractors. Okay, I, as I understand the testimony then, the roof is in compliance now. Is that correct? Whether it was permitted or not is an open issue, but the roof is in compliance. Is that correct? Yes, the roof has been completed. If it was not completed, then it's not going to be inspection. Okay. <laughs> and the other violations, uh, Uh, what, what about the, the grass and the weeds? Correct, that is total violation as far as I know. I have not verified that it's working. Do you, do you agree with that? The grass the issue with the grass and weeds is still. No, we cut the grass. Since the 14th? Since the 14th of when? This month. Ja January? Yeah, Valentine's Day is the same. It's fine. We were there up until Sunday. When, when did you last cut the grass or the other grass? Uh, during the, when we fixed that down, when we were doing the windows, early January. Was it December 14th, you're talking about, or February 14th? February 14th. Uh, we can go to that. <coughs> How long have you owned this property? A couple months, and it's been a hard, long journey to get things up on there. Okay, uh, here's what I'm going to do is uh,
log that I have <clears throat> that when the, the log is dated October 11th and you were shown as the owner at the time, was, would that be accurate? Yes. Okay. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to enter an order uh, finding that uh, of the cited violations that they all did exist, uh, that the roof and drainage issue is now in compliance. Um, Your Honor, the city would request that, and I, I apologize, that in the event there was a re-inspection and there were an issue with the roof or there was something remaining outstanding and we found it in compliance and a new case would be open, that would be a repeat event. I would request that the city would request that we just find there would be an order fine violation, um, provide a certain amount of time to come into compliance so that way if the property is in compliance, we can provide the appropriate affidavit of compliance and there's no issue with repeat events and we can verify compliance. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well my intention was to find that all the violations did exist, but the property is now in compliance. So if the concern is about uh, repeat offenses, uh, it will be found that there was a violation. But it sounds like to me from the testimony I'm hearing that the roof is not an issue presently. Okay. All right. Um, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter an order finding that um, all of the cited violations did exist, that the one violation regarding the roof is now in compliance. Um, the rest of them, I'm going to find that those continue to exist. I'm going to give you 30 days to bring the property in compliance or a $25 a day fine will commence to accrue. That could be sufficient time. I mean, Based on your testimony, you're saying that all these other issues have been taken care yes. of. Um, well, I'm going to give you 30 days for you and Mr. C to get together and confirm that everything has been taken care of. And under my order, no fine will commence to accrue um, if that is in fact the case. Okay. I will assess the city's cost, the amount of $240.34. Those will be paid within 30 days.
photographs, et cetera, with the exception of those that are noted otherwise will be considered admitted into evidence, not only in this case, but in all cases that we're hearing today. Um, so case number 18-1513, uh, based on the evidence presented and testimony of the officer, uh, I will in an order find that the violations did exist and continue to exist on the property. Property owner shall have 30 days between the property and compliance or fine of $25 a day will commence to accrue. Uh, the city's cost, the amount of $179.68 will be assessed. Those will be payable within 30 days. Behind 1840 4th Street Northwest, this will be behind John Crash and Grease Cat throughout the property. Longwood. Household food waste being dumped on the property. <coughs> Notice of violation was sent by certified mail and received by the owners on December 3rd, 2018. Notice gave 15 days to correct violations. We inspected the property on December 26th. The violations were not corrected. Photos on the screen accurately depict the violations were taken on December 26th. That date of the violation was sent by certified mail and received by the owners on January 22nd, 2019. Last inspected on February 14th, and the property was not in compliance. I'm requesting an order of finding a violation, recommending 15 days for compliance, a $25 per day fine be imposed. Most requesting costs incurred by the city for processing this case be assessed, cost to date, total of $224.35. Okay, thank you. Is this vacant lot adjacent to the previous case? Yes, sir, it's directly behind them. Okay. All right. Um, again, anybody here on case number 18 1514? Property address 0 4th Street Northwest. Okay, based on the evidence testimony presented to me this morning, I will find that the violations did exist and continue to exist on the property. Uh, the property owner will be given 15 days to bring the property in compliance, or a fine of $25 a day will commence to approve. City's cost, the amount of $224.35 will be assessed. Those are payable within 30 days of today's date. Okay, next we have case number 18-1570. That property address is 809 21st Street Northwest. Anyone here? Okay, here. Good morning. Yes, good morning. I'm uh, fine. How are you, sir? Good morning. Thank you. Good. Um, Mr. Seal, would you present this case, please? Yes, this is case. Number 18-1570, the violation address is 809 21st Street Southwest, <clears throat> is owned by Alan Alfred and Aileen Alfred. I first inspected the property on December 14th, 2018, and buried the possibly vacant residence with a pile of three food used toilets, piles on the side of the residence, also overflowing trash containers. Notice violation was sent by certified mail and received by the owners on January 2nd, 2019. Notice gave 10 days to correct violations. I inspected the property on February 14th and the violations were not corrected. Photos on the screen accurately depict the violations taken on January 14th. That day of the violation, the notice of payment was sent by certified mail and received by the owners on January 22nd. I last inspected the property on February 14th and the property was in compliance. I'm requesting an order finding violation, no fine imposed. Most requested the cost incurred by the city for processing this case be assessed close to eight total one hundred and eighty dollars and eighteen cents. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Would you would you state your name for the record, please? Oh, sure, it's Alan L. Alport. And you're the owner of the property? I am. Okay, sir. What would you like for me to take into consideration this morning? No, uh, you know, the it is correct. The property wasn't in compliance. Me and my wife, once we did get notification. It was some of the interior work that was being done on the property. Uh, the, the contractor did not clean up. We did come back and clean up the property. It, it is in compliance. And, you know, we apologize that it wasn't that condition at that point that we, when we did see it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sure. Uh, I, I, based on the, the, not only uh, your testimony, but also that of um, Officer Sia, I will. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will enter an order finding that the violations did exist, but that the property is now in compliance. So yeah. no, no fine will be assessed. Um, but the city's cost, the amount of $180.18 will be assessed. Those will be payable within 30 days. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lake Tower Drive. Good morning. 
Good morning, sir. Uh, Mr. Silla, this is your case. Would you present, please? Yes, sir. This is Table 19-42, the violation address is 490 East Lake Howard Drive, Northwest, known by the Crab House International LLC. Don't know slide on case number 16-1586 for a violation of MPMS code 604.3, 04.7, <coughs> case went to hearing on April 20th, 2017, and it was ruled that the violation did exist and order finding violation ended given the property on repeat offender status. I inspected the property on January 9th, 2019, and found violations had reoccurred. I cleared the vacant building with rotted damaged areas around the entire building on the patient and soffit. Uh, electrical fixtures damaged and exposed to the elements and disrepair. Goes on the screen accurately. The picture violation was taken on January 9th. The property owner was notified of repeat violations and of today's hearing by certified mail on January 22nd, 2019. The last inspected property on February 29th, 2019. The violations were not corrected. I've been have been contacted by the property owner, Mr. Lisbon, who advised that the new damage was done by vandalism. <coughs> violations that observed of each day the violations continue. Most requesting the cost incurred by the city be assessed to date the cost of process in this case of $116.84 listed on the cost of affidavit. Thank you. So you're requesting $20 a day from the date of the recurrence which uh, was 200 sir. 200 yes okay. Excuse me. Since the date of the recurrence, which was a reoccurrence, which was uh, January 9th, is that correct? Yes, sir. <coughs> All right. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Would you identify yourself for the record, please? My name is Corey Lisbon, man managing member operator of the Crab House International LLC. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lisbon, what would you like for me to take into consideration this morning? Also, have the record reflect that Pastor Coward is also here with me today as a potential buyer of the property. Okay. Okay. Um, we're here to address what we call a re offense case. Um, I spoke with Mr. Hosea. Uh, I purchased this building back in 2015. At the time, it had some major code enforcement issues. I know the building sat for some time, it needed a lot of work. I purchased it for the future expansion of my restaurant at the time I was in a four year lease with two years remaining. Uh, I contacted at the time Ms. Tanya Long to find out exactly what I needed to do to bring the property into compliance. At that time I began the repairs to bring the property into compliance. During the time that I'm dealing with that violation, Mr. Josia comes with another violation that I didn't know anything about at that time. but. I thought everything was taken care of. By the time I went to go get a mortgage on it, I found out that Mr. Josia had some ongoing issues. So we're going to fast forward now because I see the same scenario playing itself out again. I met with Mr. Josia out at the property to find out exactly what was going on. I was completely confused. Um, note that this property has been repaired. Violations was corrected, which we're seeing is repeated. Prior to the hurricane that a lot of people was experiencing damage. This building didn't suffer any damage after the repairs were done during that hurricane season. But yet now we have what we call uh, repeated damage. The hurricane couldn't break that stuff down. But now we have it broken down. What we have here is vandalism. If you and Mr. Hosea knows that he came out and he checked off on these very same items. When I met him out at the property, what we have here is another case. This is how I got confused the last time. Remember, this is a learning experience for me. So you got two separate cases. Here today, we're here for uh, case 19-42R, and we also have another one going in case 1972. When I originally met with Mr. Josia, I was confused, wanted to know what was going on. Uh, the experience was being documented at the time. As we were walking around the building, he only pointed out these issues, not the issues that we're here for today. He only pointed out these issues. I asked Mr. Ozell, 
do we have any fires running on this building at the time? On two or three different occasions, he said, no, okay, no problem. Once we got to the point around the front of the building, we saw that some broken wood was on the floor, on the ground, so forth. So I explained to him, you know, I'm not denying the fact that the damages are here and they need to be repaired. I'm not denying that. But I am not in violation of a repeat, repeated offender if someone came out and caused this damage. Mr. Zo said he had to check off. We had to check off on all of this to say that it was done. So for someone, for, look at this. Look at this. You can see where someone took a hammer and broke that. You can look here. It's the difference between why and you can see fresh wood. I asked for a law enforcement officer to come out to document that the property is being violated. Here's where I'm at at this point. Every time that I've had a mortgage set in place on this, these scenarios play itself out. Every time I have a potential buyer on this property, these scenarios, they play themselves out. What I'm hearing consistently from my buyers is excitement in the beginning and confusion and, and no desire to purchase after they come out and do their due diligence process because during the process, you got people approaching them, telling them horror stories about the property, potential uh, investors that was gonna loan me the money to do the repairs. They don't wanna loan me the money because all of the horror stories you call to the city for information on what they can do as far as the usage and so forth during their due diligence. And I'm, all I'm hearing is horrible stories. What is so horrible about a 4,707 square foot Lakeview property on beautiful Lake Howard? Tell me. And why am I going through so much? I've been in here how many times about this property? This has been done to create, let's stop right here. You can see where the wood was pulled off from here. This has been Fitz, can I ask a question, Mrs. Ocea? This was also cited at one point, considered repeat. Do you recall coming out and checking on, do you recall wood being placed over here? Yes, sir, it was. So, I don't want to feel that there's a conspiracy going on, but at this point, I'm very frustrated and agitated. Now I just want to sell the property, not something that I wanted to do. I had a desire to eventually expand my business. We only carry out at the time, and we've done a great job in the city for the last six years. I just wanted to expand my business. I'm being frustrated, and at some point I feel like I'm being harassed. This is just like, rip. on the 9th, okay, in December, I was, an offer was made, low ball offer made on the property. I denied it. The last thing I heard is we're checking with the city about some electrical stuff. I'm not just a restaurant owner, I'm a real estate investor as well. The city has nothing to do with, rather, electricity is not even running to this place at all. I had nothing back from them, but now in January, I get this. Somewhere down the line, I find the building that's right here that's not shown in the picture that's adjacent is where the AA meeting is held. Well, they're always using my park, and the place is not operational. You see people using my park. This is my property. I didn't say anything about them using the property for the AA. But for them to stand and damage my property because someone there has a personal interest in it, this is not fair. I asked Mr. Jones here, I pointed out my concerns. I said, sir, can some, you're telling me, we're standing right here when I said it. I said, sir, so can, you're telling me someone can come and harass me, they can vandalize my building and use code enforcement to enforce sanctions? He said, I'm sorry, but they can. I can't foresee that. All of the great work that's going on in the city of Winter Haven, why is this property the only problem that seems property that seems to be a nuisance? I've contacted the city, I've contacted the Chamber of Commerce, because it was like this with me. I wanted what was best for this particular location. And I wasn't going to sell a property to just anyone. So I've been mindful who I passed on the property to because one of the things that we agreed that we would not let this place be another nightclub. Okay? It's making it difficult for me to A get alone on the place when I'm contained. And I have it all documented on the same scenarios playing itself out. And what, what I'm concerned about is, when I originally met with Mr. Zosia, we walked the building once. He only spoke about the issues that had no fines running on them. Until I brought out my other paper and said, sir, well, what's this? And then he begins to get agitated and frustrated. He could have completely forgot all about it, but if you look here, this is not rock, that's fresh wood. You can see where someone pulled this down. Someone can try to say, this is what it's gonna to take to put me, I feel, in a compromising, distressed situation and make me no longer value the property. 
This is a very unfortunate situation. I shouldn't be standing here. I asked Mr. Zosia, after you knew that this property, why did you even come out to the property? Well, this morning I found out that this is like a, a complaint by the man system. And he tells me, well, we thought the trees that was hanging over and over were yours. I found out it was the property of next door or something along those lines. So I'm, I'm, I'm just really confused. What is it about this property? What is it about a building that the city don't like? Or let me take that back because that was just something that people were saying to me that people don't like. And why are the people next door always approaching potential buyers or lenders and giving them so much bad information? What is it about this property that I don't know? And if they don't want me to have it, just make me a reasonable offer. It's simple. Well, I'm, I'm here to preside over code enforcement violations. Uh, all these other issues really have little to no bearing on they the issue. Have, I'm sorry, sir, you know, with, no, with all due respect, they all have all bearings of relevance to, the, to this situation. Well, I think you can see from the agenda today that you're not the only one that's being cited by the city of Winter Haven. Uh, that's not that's not that's not what I'm, that's not what I'm saying. What I want to point out to you guys is this. First of all, we're saying repeat. Mr. Joseph cited this. He knows that he just testified and said yes, it was correct. So for it not to be there now, what does that mean? I didn't go take it off. We have to acknowledge the facts. We cannot allow someone to manip to manipulate the system in such a manner that's not going to encourage future business in the city. By manipulate the system, you mean vandalism? Well, I asked Mr. Josiah, could someone come out and inflict this damage on my building and then call you guys and, uh, and, and, and use the system? And he said yes. So, I mean, the reality of it is you have the power and authority right now to acknowledge the facts that I presented to you. The damage is there. It needs to be repaired. True indeed. No problem with repairing the damages and so forth. All I'm asking for is this not to be a repeat status to give me enough time to just sell the building to someone who has the capital to be able to go ahead and move quickly and to repair the building and so forth. And that's it. Just give me time to get rid of the building and I'll be done with it. Your Honor, pursuant to the section 162.04 of the Florida statutes, repeat violation means a violation of a provision of a code or ordinance by a person who has been previously found through a code enforcement board or any other quasi-judicial or judicial process who have violated or who has admitted violating the same provision within five years prior to the violation, notwithstanding the violations occur at different locations. Um, we cannot treat you any differently than we would treat any other citizen and pursuant to statutory law, this is considered a repeat violation. It's not something that the city has ordained that we uh, treat one person different from the other. We are abiding by Florida law. Um, Florida statutory law uh, preempts local government in certain sentences or instances from uh, regulating certain areas. In this particular instance, the city has to abide by Florida law, Florida statutory law, this would be a repeat offense case. So it's not that we're intentionally trying to treat it differently. Um, but that's the city's position on whether or not this would be a repeat offense, Your Honor. I understand. Thank you. Okay. So <laughs> now let's address, address that issue, okay? Let's start with item number one. Mr. Jose, can you point out the hanging fixtures and exposed wires? Okay, can we go back for a second? Can we go back for a second? Yes, yes sir. Did you also repeat? So we, we've been cited for this already, correct? Yes, sir. Did you come out and check off on it? That it was corrected at one point? I can't say that specific thing, but yes, for the, the violation. Okay, if you can't well, say correct. that particular thing, then that's not a repeat item. If, if they're the same violation of the same ordinance, it's a repeat. It doesn't have to be the same 
uh, electrical box. It doesn't have to be the same piece of plywood or fascia. If it's the same ordinance or section thereof, then it would be a repeat offense. Okay, so question, Mr. Hazel. When we were originally walking around the building, you didn't address any of that. You pointed out some other items. Why didn't mean, you point that out to me and say, well, that's going to have to be fixed as well, or you're being fine at this particular time? Because I asked you personally, I asked you. Yes, but when we walked around the building, we discussed the repeat violations. And I see, pointed out the ones that you had and suggested that you <coughs> get those correct at first and to find the rebuttal on those, on the other violations, on the other case, there was no fine had they been to hearing yet, that you would have time and I can give you an extension to get those things done. That's why these violations were specifically pointed out at that time. Honestly, I'm very disheartened um, that we're not acknowledging the fact that this building has been vandalized and that you guys are not giving me enough time to move uh, in a way that will work best for everyone and that's me getting rid of the property and allow someone else to have the capital to come in and repair it. Uh, to sit here and say that I'm going to continue to charge you $200 a day, um, it was at night, on the 9th, um, and I wasn't able to get in touch with Mr. Josia until the 23rd and so forth, so these fines are just running at my mercy. No one is acknowledging the fact that what you're seeing is, we're seeing repeat, meaning that I came before you guys once, we acknowledged that there was a violation, I agreed to correct them, I corrected them, you guys checked off on them, okay? So what we're acknowledging now is damage. You see this hanging down? All of this, you can see it. He saw wood hanging down. Wood that's just sitting on beside the building. We all that day acknowledge that there is some foul play that took place. Again, I'm not denying that it doesn't need to be repaired. I will repair it, but what I'm saying is that it's completely unfair and ridiculous to charge me $200 a day and hold me accountable to that until it get done. I'm asking for time to go ahead and sell the building and just be done with it. Wash my hands with it and we'll be done. Well, let me make an observation. I, I'm looking at some of these photographs and I see, uh, I see fascia and flashing that is pulled away and separated from each other. Uh, yes, sir. I see soffit that's pulled away. I see soffit that is um, appears to be rotten and has uh, deterioration of the product. Not doesn't appear. I mean, I don't know whether it's vandalism or not, but it, it looks like deterioration just due to time. Let's look at this. Okay, when we're looking at deterioration, we're looking at a darkness that took place from water seeping it over time. You can see the freshness, okay? So, I mean, we can go in and at the end of the day, it's your job to stand behind the ordinance and so forth and understand, I understand. And as city council, it's your responsibility to make sure law and so forth and so on. But it's also good to advise the city to do what's right in some instances. And in this instance, if you guys allow me to walk out of here today and say that we're going to post $200 a day and we're going to make you fix this regardless of what took place or whatever the case may be, that is not going to sit well with me as a business owner in the city of Winter Haven. I don't think that no one would want to do business in a city where they allow other people that may be more influential than them um, to be able to harass them and manipulate the system in order to get the advantage. Well, let me ask you something. So you're saying that everything I see up there in that upper left-hand corner is vandalism. When you say left-hand corner, I want to make sure we're on upper, the same picture. Upper left-hand corner, yes, sir. And you're saying right here? I'm saying everything I see in that picture that might be a violation of the code that's been cited as a repeat offense. You're saying everything there is vandalism. And for my, and yes, sir. From my understanding, what we're discussing that he said the violation is this soffit area right here that continues. Okay, and earlier I asked him, and again, I'm not being confrontational, I just want to state the facts. I asked Mr. Jose and I asked him again, sir, do you recall coming out and checking off on this building where this was repaired at one point? I'm sorry? Yes, yes, sir. I, I don't think anybody's contesting, I, and that's not the well, issue. Well, you just asked me a question, sir, with all due respect, and I want him to answer because I'm telling you, if we repaired it and it's not there now, I mean, to say vandalism means that's somewhat extreme, but that's the reality of it. Well, I, I just want to be sure I understand. Yes, sir. So I've been established that the previous violations were corrected. 
Correct. That's okay. been established. You've been cited on a repeat violation because those same violations of that same nature on this property have been cited again. That's what's before me today. That's correct. To That's whether or not there's a, yes, a repeat sir. violation of those same code provisions. So I'm looking at, and I'm, I hear what you're saying, that this is all the result of vandalism, but I'm looking at the photographs, and you're telling me everything I see in the photographs there is vandalism, not deterioration of... What I'm sharing with you to clarify for the record is that everything that these pictures are being used for to cite me according to whatever is documented on this paper, I am saying someone has came out and actually took it off, you can call it vandalism or whatever the case may be. It's not in the state that I corrected it. And what it did is create a very circumstance for me to be standing present here today. It's what I'm stating. And again, I understand that it has to be fixed. Have no problem doing so. But $200 a day is very suppressive. Okay, let's, let's go to the next set of pictures. So, and, and you're saying that everything that I see there... What I'm telling you right here is that's a hammer, and you can actually see where some of the wood behind there, you can see the darkness, and you can see the not lightness of it to where the weather hasn't begun to deteriorate. And I'm telling you, you can see the similarity of it. Everything that you see in these softens are going to have the same similar little oval. And if you take consideration of a hammer being used, that's what you're gonna see. If you go around, if you look at these light fixtures that's going all the way, there's another picture that's not reflected here. I have it, but it's not showing here. When you're walking up the steps, you can actually see where it has been pulled away. Mr. Hosea, do you recall that uh, particular area that I'm discussing? Yes, sir, that's yes. part of the other case. I'm sorry? That's part of the other case. Right, and that's another thing. Why aren't all the, I, I don't, this is like the second time that it's happened to me where I'll be cited with one case and then another case on another. It's somewhat confusing. A citation is a citation. I mean, I'm, I'm confused. Well, you're here on repeat violation. Now, I assume that the other case, I don't know anything about the other case, but if that's for new violation? Yes, sir. Okay, so that's a whole different deal. But it's your, it's, it's your testimony that what I'm seeing in that upper left-hand corner is not, you mentioned deterioration. You're saying that what I see in the upper left-hand corner, that's not deterioration. What that's, you see back here in the back, so... Wait, 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 wait. Listen, let me finish, okay? What I'm seeing in that upper left-hand corner is your testimony today that that is all the result of someone's intentional act. It's not the result of failure to maintain or deterioration. Yes, sir, that's what I'm testifying to. Okay. Well, let's go to some of the other photographs if we can. You know, scroll through to the next set of, and the lower left, uh, lower right hand corner, what I'm seeing there, you're saying that's all somebody's intentional act. Yes, sir. This has been pulled down right in this area, right here, uh, in this area right down. Mr. Zosia was there. The officer was present at the time when I pointed out suspicious of it being uh, tampered with. There was a piece of board laying there as well that has been actually pulled from that to make that paint down that way. Okay, Mr. Jose, do you recall seeing that board that I pointed out to you? Yes, sir. Lower right hand corner, you're saying that's all vandalism? Right here? Yes, sir. Some of this is rock, but what you would be able to see is yes, you will see where this was pulled down. <coughs> some of it is rock. However, <coughs> that's what it is. This particular area right here, this may be what it is. I don't have a problem with that. But this particular area, and I know where we're at, it has been damaged in that area. And a lot of pictures that the like right here up under this, there's just a little small piece of wood that was pulled from right up under the window. It's similar to this piece right here. That was cited as well. I mean, I'm just being realistic. In the past, I've come before you guys. I've learned what I needed to do, even if I was in disagreement with it. I learned what I needed to do to go out and come in compliance with it. But at this particular point, I don't feel that this is fair. I don't think it's right, and I think it's a bit extreme. Yes, sir, if you'll look right here, if you'll notice this right here, this is a result of something being hit. It's all, it's all, again, remember, some of the, he was right, he was saying that it, um, there's no favoritism, so 
even with this building, we're saying that it's a rotten building, but when the hurricane came by, it didn't cause any damage to this building. The repairs that we're talking about occurred prior to the hurricane. So what I'm asking is, how couldn't the hurricane shake this building, but all of a sudden, just a short period of time later, it just all decided to just fall apart? And the only thing that's consistent here is the offers that's being made to me uh, low ball offers that's being made on the property. And again, I feel the motive behind it is to create a distressed situation, to put me in a, uncompromis in a compromised predicament, to make me want to just sell the property with the mindset that I have now. This is not a property that I wanted to sell. I had future plans for this property when I was in a position to be able to afford to get it fixed. But again, as I've tried to repair this building through the years, I've seen this very same scenario play itself out for the second time. And this is why I'm able to see it now because I was naive to the facts the last time it happened to me. Well, I remember the previous case uh, when I issued the previous order that's the basis for the repeat offense. Um, my recollection is that the property had a lot of problems. It did. It did. Um, but again, remember, I asked, what do we need to do to bring it in compliance? And that was done. So I don't, regardless of whatever work needs to be done, it was in compliance. Yeah. And, until and the building was tempered with it. No, no one, I, don't, I haven't heard anything that, and we're not here today on any kind of case where anybody's saying that you didn't bring the property in compliance after the original order that I the That's not what I'm stating either. What I'm doing is I'm establishing the fact that it was repaired, which, because we're dealing with repeat. Yeah, but I'm looking at what appears to be offenses today of the same nature of the ones that I heard of when I entered an order on previously. Okay. So the fact that you repaired them in the interim avoided a, a fine. It doesn't have anything to do with whether or not this is a repeat status case. Okay. I understand the language that you're using to where you can apply the law to the scenario, but I'm asking you guys to look at the reality of the situation and take those facts into consideration. guys allow people to continue to harass us, 
I will move my location, and I will make it clear the kind of activities that are allowed to take place in the city. This is discouraging to anyone that wants to establish a business in the city. Everyone that tried to buy this property decided they didn't want to buy because of all of the bad stuff that they're hearing about it. And I know one's answered my question, what's so bad about a 4,707 square foot Lakeview property sitting on beautiful Lake Well, uh, just one last question for you, then I'm going to uh, announce my ruling. Upper left-hand corner. Off the left hand corner. Right here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're saying that's that's a result of somebody's intentional act of vandalize. That's exactly what I'm telling you. That's exactly what I'm telling you. They're right there. And I can just see it in my mind that the back end of the hammer would just use the pride of the part, allow that to fall down that wire. What make it consistent that these are also connected to the soffit and you'll see that they're broke in certain places. Right here. You see how it's broke right there? Yeah, it didn't just hang, it didn't just fall down and break. If it was just natural that we're saying that it is that put me in a repeat status, then when it fell, it would have still been attached to it, but it's been damaged. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else for my consideration today? Okay. I'm going to uh, find that the, the, uh, this, the violations do exist on the property, they did exist and they do exist on the property, that they are. Uh, of the same nature as was previously cited. Uh, so it is a repeat status case with the uh, date of recurrence running from January 9 of 2019. Uh, instead of $200 a day as requested by the city, I'm going to do a $100 a day uh, fine on the property. And I will assess the city's costs the amount of $116.84. Uh, those will be paid within 30 days. Okay. So wait a minute, so we can make sure we understand this. Okay, so you're telling me we're at $100 a day that's running the current now from January the 9th, and I'm paying court costs for today. I need to go out, correct the issue, uh, get on the hearing and come back in and say that the issue's been corrected to see what we can do to resolve it at that point? You can apply for a fine reduction, yes, sir. Mr. Lisbon, as soon as you get the violations corrected, contact me so I can get the fine stopped and go out and verify that the violations Corrected, we'll get that one installed that day. But here's what I need everyone to understand. Okay, when you have a potential buyer looking to purchase a property that needs so much work done to it, okay, when they hear code enforcement violations that sound horrible, no one is going to want to purchase this property in the gym with code enforcement issues running on it. And I'm not going to go out and spend another couple thousand dollars just because someone feels that I can go out and harass the guy at the crowd house because. He don't know anything. I mean, we'll just frustrate him until he sells it to us for little or nothing. That is not fair. Um, I, I've announced my ruling. I appreciate what okay. you're saying. Uh, I can tell you, uh, not that I'm here to offer advice, but I can tell you that we have cases that come before. We may have some today under reductions where people buy distressed properties, understanding that there is a code enforcement issue. They take care of it right away, and they get the fine reduced. In some cases, they get eliminated. Um, so, uh, it's not an impossibility. Yeah, I've had a very bad experience in this city for the last six years, and I appreciate that the records reflect. Well, I, uh, I appreciate what you're saying. I've announced my ruling, and uh, we're going to move on to the next case now. Property address 408th Street, North and East. So call here? Yes, yes morning, sir. Uh, this is a rehearing. The rules that apply on a rehearing is the rehearing is limited to uh, consideration of those matters that were raised in the request for rehearing, uh, which, as I recall, that was strictly the ownership of, or does the fence lie, in fact, on the site of owner's property? As I recall, that was. The one item that was met, mentioned in the request for rehearing. Is that consistent with everybody else's recollection? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. Woods, this is your case. Would you present it, please, on that one item? Yes, sir. Okay. This is case number 18 778. The violation address is 408th Street Northeast and is owned by Brian McCall. 
I first inspected the property on June 26, 2018, and observed a single family residence, a swarming flying insect, insects around the rear of the structure, outside storage of appliances in the rear yard, and fence sections in disrepair. A notice of violation was sent by certified mail, and a copy of the notice was posted at the property in the <coughs> law on July 31st, 2018. The notice gave 30 days to correct the violations. I re-inspected the property on September 5th, 2018, and the violations were not corrected. The photos on the screen actually picked the violations and were taken on September 15th, 2018, and October 11th, 2018. An affidavit of violation and notice of hearing was sent by certified mail, and a copy of the notice was posted at the property in City Hall on November 5th, 2018. I last inspected the property on November 9th, 2018, and the property was not in compliance. A letter of continuance was submitted by the property owner and denied by the special magistrate. This case was brought before the special magistrate on November 15, 2018. I requested an order finding violation, recommending 30 days for compliance or a $25 per day fine be imposed. I also requested costs incurred by the city for processing this case in the amount of $274.31. The owner was found in violation of Board of Code Section 21-68F and an order finding violation allowing 45 days or a $50 per fine, day fine was imposed and city costs in the amount of $274.31 payable in 30 days. On December 20th, 2018, an order granting a hearing was ordered and signs scheduled for February 21st, 2019, which brings us here today. I last re-inspected the property for a hearing on February 15th, 2019 and the violation still existed. I, along with my supervisor, time here. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to also dovetail that, Your Honor, um, just by stating for the record that sub F of the cited section states, the property owner shall maintain any fence to its original design, uh, design condition. Missing boards, pickets, posts, gates, etc., shall be replaced in a timely manner with material of the same type, quality, and finish as the existing fence. That's the property owner, any fence. So the issue squarely before us, Your Honor, would be whether or not the fence ownership being immaterial is located on the property owner's property. Okay, thank you. Okay, somebody uh, help me with these photographs. Um, If you will, please. This is the this front of the house. This is the front of the house. Okay. And where am I now? Is this the back or the side? This is the side of the house. Okay. And it starts at let's see, right here. Same, same as here. So does the fence come off the side of the house? No, no sir. It's a gate. There's a gate. There is. There is a chain link gate that matches my other fence uh, and has nothing to do with this fence. And that's one of many reasons to. Okay, well, before you get started, I, I don't want to cut you off, but I, I just want to get myself okay. yeah, that, oriented. Yeah, um, that Approximately right sides. here is where the fence actually starts. That's a tree and the fence comes up to that tree, basically. And we're looking at a wooden fence? These, or what's left these of photos fence? here, sir, are close up. It, it's, so that's the, that's, that's the fence that's the subject of the citation, right there. There's here. several different types of fences, sir. Okay. All right. And, uh, May I ask the, the property marker on the top right, is that a property marker? Yes. All right, and, and on which side of the marker is the fence and your property? I have pictures of the let zoom or I'll do that later whenever. Uh, can you identify? Yes, I'm sorry. On which side? Yes, yeah, so I'm looking at the top right, mm -hmm. and that's the fence to the right or to the left? Where? It's to the right, the marker. Here, this is someone else's, but property. the fence runs this way, not this way, so that's irrelevant. Yeah, this angle, this, way. this is more like a hog wire fence, and this is the partial 
wire fence that leads into this fence. What marker are we referring to? This one right here. It's kind of hard to see. This is also the same marker from a different angle, standing on this property, uh, looking at. So that's just a state? Yes, sir. This, and this is located on the northeast corner of the property. Okay. That's correct. Yes. All right. Miss Woods, who state the property? Engineering, our engineering citation go to all three types of fence or just one fence? Yes. It did not until I disputed it and then at punitively they added the others. Okay. Right. Once I disputed but not before. Okay. Um, anything else? No, sir. So engineering went out staked. I saw the stake on one corner. Did they stake any other corners in order to get a line on where the property line was? Yes, sir. I believe they staked three corners of the property. And we don't let's see where is the oh, we have a photo of where. Okay. Um, so this is staked. All three corners are staked, but right here I don't believe they were able to stake it due to it's someone else's this is someone else's property and they weren't able to access this area. So I believe there's never been a stake in this area. But on all other three corners. Has, has a stake. You can see at the front of the property. That doesn't make sense. Go back. And then there's another one here. That's these are the three. One, two. This is all the same property. So three. if they had access to this, they had access to that. That is my belief that the fourth the corner was not staked due to the location. Are we dealing with any fence that's the subject matter of the citation that lies along that property line that we're... Right here? Yes. Yes, sir. The hog wire, which I believe is called a hog wire fence, okay. is in, in disrepair. And if you, you look... You see that right here. If you can see it, you see it laying down? Yeah. That's, that's here, of a different angle. And if you look at her pictures here, you can see looking down the fence line that the base of the fence, although yes, the top is across the line, the base comes down, and I have pictures here that clearly show that fence is connected to the neighbor's other fence. Okay. All right, any, uh, uh, anything else from the city at this time? No. I believe there were additional pictures taken on February 15th. Um, I also have a copy here um, I will take down to, uh, if you don't mind me approaching you. No, not at all. Okay. Um, Thank yes, you, Is there anything new in this? Or is this just something I need to read right now? Or? Uh, Mr. McCall, I received these pictures this morning as well, so I would uh, implore you to look through them. And if uh, you object to any of the pictures coming in as evidence, please state so. See where the pictures at the front of the house have anything to do with anything. I believe the picture next to the truck uh, depicts the, the disrepair of the chain link fence. Um, it's not in disrepair, it just doesn't have a top rail. I mean, if the fence stands up, it's fine, it's not falling down. It's determined by the, um, the building the department that. Uh, that the top is rail is not necessary. I read the email he sent to you saying that. 
Well, the code provision, as I understood and recall from the reading of it, is to be maintained in its original construction. And there hasn't been a top rail since I bought the house. So. It says the owner shall maintain any fence to its original design condition. The fence surrounding that particular portion all has a top rail, Your Honor. Nothing on that stretch of fence has a top rail. I, I don't contest yeah. that. Right. This is right next to it, sir. This is where the missing top rail is, and this is where the top rail is. A different stretch of fence. But then it looks like it's a different kind of paper. Said that's been added, so that's news to me. That was not part of the original contestation. That was only punitively added after, <coughs> after I protested the fence being mine. The other fence, I'm not saying that fence is mine. That is my fence. I'll see that that fence, not the picture there, is mine. Which, which fence are you saying is yours? The one where my truck's parked. Right there. You still can't see it. You can't see it in any picture. They don't show it because there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but other than the fact that it does not have a top rail and does not require a top rail according to their own emails. Sir, I did submit photos from two, two um, but I, I'm not contesting that fence. That's not the one I'm here to contest. I'll see that that's my fence. No problem. All right, the one, just so I'm clear, uh, which, which section of fence are you conceding is yours? It's not in this picture, and you really can't see it in that picture, but it's right runs from the corner of the house to where the trash can is sitting. If, whoop, there it went. Right there. There it is. That. Okay. So that, you're saying that section is yours, but the, from the corner running to the, to the right, you're saying that's not yours? No, so that's not, there's nothing in question about that fence. That's okay. mine too. So that lower Here, right maybe I just will help in the The lower, lower right-hand corner photo, mm -hmm. that's your fence as well? Yes, sir. That's okay. my, the corner of my lot, basically. Okay. And I'm not contesting that that is my fence. So that's not your structure or home that I see in the lower right-hand, uh, left-hand corner, excuse me. Are you referring to that that's, that's or yours. that? Well, that's an accessory structure, sir. This is his home. That's the accessory structure here. The same. Okay. All right. Uh, this, I can show pictures to okay. back this up, but this is, makes it a little easier to understand the whole thing. The pictures are not clear. Um, could, could you hold this for me, please, where I can point to it and then you can have it? This is my house right here where I'm standing. The fence, the chain link fence would run along here. I didn't put it on here because there's no question about it. I have a picture here that shows the end of my chain link fence, right where that X is. It shows the end of my chain link fence and the beginning of the neighbor's chain link fence. And that um, is a little, then it's close up it's showing that the fence, the hog wire fence, along the rear here is connected to the neighbor's fence. It's clearly, yes sir, you got it upside down. That's shown at top connected to the neighbor's fence and bottom connected to the neighbor's fence. And that fence runs from here to here along the back. Um, so you can see where the fence post, although it's leaned over across my property line, the actual fence posts begin on the neighbor's property. The other fence, if you will go back, whoop, whoop, right there, that's running this way out of the picture. You can see the marker right here, and it's running this way. That is, oh, go ahead. Any picture is given to the dais become part of the, the file on B 
you need copies because we have to retain any evidence of I, I have digital copies, but I would like copies, copies shown that those have been turned in. Um, That's okay. I was getting to the other fence. Um, this is <laughs> this is the other fence and the original fence and the original contestation. The property line, according to that state, is this black line. There is a tree right in the middle of the property line, and that's significant because when the fence reaches that tree. It veers onto the neighbors, which is the bottom half of this picture, and stays on the neighbors, and then back to the property line. Their attestation is that I put up the privacy fence to block the view of the pool. Problem with that is, even if this wasn't on the neighbor's property, the problem with that is the pool's way back here, the privacy fence is way over here, and not exposed to anything. It doesn't cover anything on my property. It does, however, cover the neighbor's front door. But it doesn't matter because. Uh, I'm sorry, but I, I'm, I'm not catching your point there. Okay. Uh, they're saying that no matter what the fence shows on what side of the property line, that logically I put up a privacy fence because I had a pool on the top. The problem is the privacy fence isn't anywhere close to the pool with that lot. That's just the fault in the logic. How long have you lived at this property? About five years. Okay. And did did you install any of the fences that are in question? No, sir. Okay. Uh, and here, although, please go back to the. Uh, yes, you can take that up to him, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. And once that, if you're unable to make a copy of that, so if you turn that in, I come for the record. If I sign it and you sell it, I want ten percent. It's my original artwork. So, do you need a I'll donate it. picture? Do you not have one looking down the fence line? I'm pretty sure I saw right one. This uh, one? No, wrong fence line. Well, yes. That's pretty much this. No, there was another one that showed the fence not being on my property. It doesn't look like you have a picture of it, um, but I do. I have two pictures showing that if you look at these pictures, this is the state, this is my property, this is the neighbor's property, this is the post, and the fence. Now, this picture is simply to give you reference. The reason it even crosses the stake of my property line, which it does just barely, not the fence itself, the post only, is because it's leaned so badly. This is another post touching at the bottom and it's running straight up and down. You can see how badly leaning over it is, which is the only reason it crosses my property line at all. Tell you the problem, Pat. When you're standing down there pointing to these, and then I get them in my hand, I, I don't have. I wish my eyes were so good that I could. <laughs> uh, Your Honor, we did, um, in anticipation of uh, having to refute any potential evidence uh, provided to date that there was not a fence that was on the Ms. McCall's property. We do have a short video if you'd like to see it. Um, if Ms. McCall has no objection. Well, I don't have a copy of it. I do have an objection to that. Because I had asked for all relevant evidence. This was taken, I believe, of what was the date taken of the video? February 15th. February 15th. So you've had plenty of time to get it to me and have it? You haven't requested any records from us since uh, February 15th? Actually, yes, I have. I have requested them in December when you told me you were too busy. February 15th ready. of this year. Last week, sir. When you told me you were too busy getting ready for vacation to 
deal with it, you would deal with it when you got back, and you would contact me, which you still have not done. Your Honor, we have no, uh, if there's an objection to the video coming in. Um, we That's the picture I was asking you to put up earlier. You can see the fence leans over across the property line state. Even though she's not taking a direct shot, she's trying to get it over here to make it look like it's Would you like us to show the video if we're going to consider a portion of it, we have to consider it in its entirety. So either we, A, do not. Is that a picture or a video? Video. Then no. Okay, so we will not take it down. Well, I'll take but I'll be glad to explain any of those pictures. I don't see. I'd like to see the video. And what we're showing. I hear Mr. McCall's objection, but over his objection, I'd like to see the video because I know others have been out there to the site. This makes perfect sense to everybody. Everybody's oriented as to what we're looking at, except for me. Well, I want the video uh, I'm totally show. Disoriented. The video shows the hog wire on the east side of the property that wraps around the post that is on the inside of the property marker that same hog wire then continues along the north side of the property showing that that encloses mr mccall's property it's not two separate fences and mr mccall just i want to make sure i completely understand it's, it's your contention that these fences are not on your property? That's correct? correct. And that you don't have any ownership interest in them? That's correct. So if your neighbor or somebody else were to come along and remove these fences, you have no objection, no claim? No, sir, I do not. Okay. All right. And in fact, that goes, thank you for making that point, because that goes to the addictive nature of this. Somebody has offered to do just that. The neighbor next door, said he'd take responsibility for the fences, he didn't like them, and if I was happy to let them go, he'd be glad to. They never told me that, they never made that offer. They only, only because I found that the emails even acknowledged that it happened. So if somebody has taken responsibility and ownership of the fence, I shouldn't even be here. Okay, I, I want to see the video. Okay, that's the neighbor's property. Right there is where I'm showing that it wraps around that same hog wire, wraps around and then continues along the north side of Mr. McCall's property behind the tree line within his property line as identified by the markers that but are in the property. It's not within my property line. line. You've got a picture right there that shows it's on the other side of the property line. But the point is that there were two well, separate fences. It, Why is it one continuous fence that wraps around the back of your property? You know what? I don't know that it is. It didn't look that way to me. Um, and I asked you to come to a walkthrough with me and show you that. And you made an appointment and never showed up. And I called and asked for another one. You never got it. So nobody has shown me that. I don't see that. And I have a letter from you stating in your own words. It doesn't matter who owns the fence, it matters whose property it's on that makes them responsible. Because I told you, hey, you know, just because somebody put a fence up on my property doesn't mean I allowed it. That just means they didn't find the property line. And you said, oh, no, it doesn't work like that. Whoever's property it's on, and I have that in writing for me. That's a correct legal statement. Any dispute that you would have as to uh, ownership of the fence would be a private civil matter between you and that neighboring property owner. Okay. But I have pictures there that show it on the neighbor's side of the property line right in front of you there. So it doesn't matter what it wraps around, which I don't see that, by the way. And nobody has come out and showed me, even though I've asked them to, in case there's something I'm not seeing. Please go back to the end. So the marker is uh, from Cole's property? Yes. And this fence posts to the right of the marker. At least it starts on the right and it's pushed over. Now, granted that she, you notice she never comes around and looks straight down the fence line because it becomes even more obvious that it's not on my property. That's what this picture showed is a straight down the line look. And again, only because that fence post is leaned so far toward my property where it's in disrepair does it even cross my property line. If it was standing straight up, it wouldn't even be close.
then when the fence was offered to be taken care of, it would have been taken care of. So there were more than, so there was the wire fence and this was the portion of the wire fence. We had the chain link fence and what was the other section of the fence which we were reviewing? Along the north side of the property, about halfway down, then it becomes also privacy that's the same as So, okay. which is not on my property either. It's all part of the fence that starts off my property and goes around the tree on the neighbor's property, getting further from my property. Another point I'd like to make, um, up until a few years ago, there was a pool on the property, an in-ground pool, yeah. which as a result of a code case, Mr. McCall filled in. State law requires that that, that property be fenced, so there would have been a requirement for a fence. Therefore, the, the entire chain fence that went up. Surrounding the rear yard of that property in order to have a pool. Therefore, the chain link fence that went up, because the other two fences were pre-existing on the neighbor's yeah. property. Do we have property markers for the privacy fence? Yes. It's the, the marker, same fence as the hog bar. The, the marker on the northwest side of the property is right alongside the road. There are a lot of bushes there which obstruct the um, sight line for the fence. I, I can flip a coin on this thing. Uh, is that marker? would like to continue the case to examine the possibility of getting a survey of the property to verify where the fence lies. That's the question. 